If you watch this Twitter stream, if you watch what's going on, this is a constant conversation. It seems like at all hours of the day or, or night. Yeah. It's pretty intense. And they not only talk about coffee, but they talk about football, they talk about sports, they talk about stuff about Mississippi State. And so I invited him, we've invited him here today to talk to us about um, interacting with the, the university community and sort of how he's doing it and the lessons he's learning and things like that. So let's welcome Shane Reed. All right, this is the first time I've been mic'd up, so. Um, also, I'm just usually uh, it's on Twitter, so if you don't mind, I'm going to just send the rest of the presentation on Twitter. Is that okay? Everybody? Yeah. All right. First off, let me say that I love you guys. I love libraries. I love librarians. And you do such a great job. I'm one of those kids that grew up with getting my mom to take me to the library all the time. Drop me off, and when they finally had to kick me out, I had a huge stack of books. I just threw in the car and uh, we just it all the time. And uh, you guys from definitely the world before it was on the World Wide Web. Can you hear back there? Uh, no. Closer. Closer? Closer. How's that? How's that? A little bit? A little bit better? No? Strange Roots, and he was, was going to open about four or five months from then. And um, 
in about one or two months, we uh, had over 3,000 people in the group. And that was in 2004. And that was uh, pretty early. It was kind of a big group back then. Uh, this allowed us to pick from the cream of the crop of students you know, for, to hire. And uh, not only people that loved coffee, but people that actually knew how to make it already. And people that we thought would be great for you know, customer service. And uh, it also allowed us to ask the customers what they wanted. You know, they, what types of drinks, what types of muffins, what time, what time we should close or what time we should open. And um, in 2008, Twitter gave us another way to talk directly to students. And the best part of Strange Brew for me is actually interacting with you guys, you know, making a good drink, you know, seeing you leave happy, you know, coming in and have a bad day. I'd love to see your smile, you know, when you go out, that's, that does it for me, you know. And Twitter actually put me in more of a direct, you know, contact with you guys, you know, the customer. Facebook and Google Plus now, they're more of a sort of a leave a message kind of thing and, you know, kind of get back and comment later sort of thing. But um, Twitter is just instant. I was talking with Amanda, you know, on the way over here. <laughs> you know, so like, I'm on my way. But um, let's see. So now what you guys I really want to know. Um, how can social media help you? And what are the, some of the best ways to utilize it? Well, I believe that the two main things you need in social media, personally, are passion and the need for exploration. You need to explore, really. Um, so let's talk about passion. First, try to establish yourself as an expert. In your field, um, make sure you have a great description of who you are and what you're trying to do for, in social media. Also, let people know they need if they need any info on anything, you know, especially coffee or libraries. You're the person to go to. I know you have a great gym in Amanda here. She knows everything about social media. She's right up with me for sure, and uh, she she knows what's going on. So use her for sure. Um, also, uh, build your credibility by you know sending tweets and uh, posts and letting people know what you're actually talking about. And uh, it's it's okay to talk about yourself sometimes. Just be ready to back up you know what you say. But again, be an expert um, as much as you can. Definitely, uh, you know people want to see something that is new. They don't want to see something that's been retweeted or posted you know, a thousand times. So try to get out there. Try to get out there early. It's, it's okay if you don't. But you know, just try to try to put compelling content out there. Something something new. Um, know your community and be a part of it. It's huge. Uh, if you're fake, people can tell and they will rip you apart big time. Um, if they even pay attention to you in the first place, which is almost worse, you know. Um, I fell in love with Starkle. I grew up an hour away from Starkle. Grew up a bulldog, you know, just it was easy for me, but it was important for me to find out what my customers wanted in the case of Strange Brew and Facebook early. And uh, people appreciated that and you only cared about Starkle. So we, it was easy. We made fans before we even saw our first cup of coffee. So, social media, it was, yay. <laughs> um, listen to your community. For instance, uh, students have been, have been asking if we could make butterbeer. And uh, I tried so many recipes. So many that were nasty, some with actual butter in it. We tried everything, and after four or five tries, we got a great tasting butter beer. And um, I mean, the movie, it was the last November when the second to the last movie was coming out, and uh, I surprised everybody. And said, you know, with a little tweet that said, "We have a fresh batch of butter beer from Hogsmeade, only a strange brew." We sold 400 in two days just from that one tweet. And it was insane. It was really crazy. But it was, yeah, people were calling me later, you know, when uh, Harry Potter World opened. They were like, you're just better. I love it. <laughs> so, uh, it, was great. it was good. But I listened to the community. You know, they had been talking about it and it just, just happened at the right time. So it was great. Um, I'm also sort of known as a trash talker when it comes to MSU sports. Um, not very bad. Um, but yeah, definitely, you know, I'm a Mississippi State coffee house, you know, right off campus. It's, you know, Mississippi State fans mostly, you know, pay my rent and my employees are in too. And it was easy for me because I grew up a bulldog, but just again, your community, it's big. Um, here's, here's one thing that I've noticed a few business accounts in Starkville, something they just don't realize. 
Um, definitely talk about yourself, obviously. You know, you need to get the information out there. But don't talk about yourself all the time. Don't sit, you know, I'm not gonna say, hey, come get a latte right now. Five minutes later, hey, come get a muffin. Hey, come, come to Strange Group, come to Strange Group. You know, we're saying, come to the libraries, come read a book, come to the libraries every time. Um, every time we talk about a Mississippi State event, or if we talk about a concert, you know, usually we don't even mention coffee, but it's in, we're in people's minds, you know, and that's important. And it's, uh, again, part of the community. I keep drilling it in. Uh, if you care about the community, it's super easy to be a part of it. Um, this is an example. We got a huge spike of users on April 27th, right after the horrific tornadoes came in. And those, that day, the, day, the days after, I wasn't tweeting for, for followers. I wasn't tweeting for to sell coffee. You know, it wasn't about that. It was about my friends in the community, and the followers of Strange Group and other people really know what's going on because we didn't have a good centralized source, you know, in town for, you know, we have power here, you know, the, the, there's, these roads are flooded, you know, trees are down. So we were in a, a unique position. We, we have over 3,200 followers right now, but in return, we follow them. And instead of just one person's perspective or 20, we had thousands. You know, I could see what was going on, and people were talking to me, you know, sending me information, and it was, it was just really cool to be able to, you know, let people know what was going on. But, um, all right, consistency. The average person, I'd say, tweets about four to six times a day. It's, I tweet anywhere from 20 to 30 for an average day. That's, that's actually probably pretty low. Um, and that's just from the one strange brew account. I have others. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, there's a fine line between being nervous and being annoying. Don't want to be annoying ever. I always try to space out your tweets. A very helpful tool. I'm sure you guys have heard about it. It's called Hootsuite. Maybe if you haven't heard about Hootsuite, check it out. It's a it's a way you can actually schedule your tweets. So for instance, you know if you I, I stay up all night. For sure, and I don't get much sleep sometimes, so I'm actually tweeting. But you can schedule your tweets to uh, sit in the middle, you know, in, in the morning, in the middle of the morning, midday, or at later at night. Um, it's very helpful. A common mistake in social media is to build up an account and to stop using it. That's death almost. I mean, people people want new information all the time, and if they if they see that you haven't tweeted in a month or even a few weeks, they will cut you quick and not come back. Um, let's see. Also, there will be days that you do not want to tweet. Do it. I suggest at least one or two. Just get out there. You know, let people know that you're active in it. And a lot of times, I found that you know people people appreciate that. They they want to talk to you, and uh, you know you can help help somebody out. You know, you can make somebody's day. You know, you never know. It could be a good customer. It could be somebody that's really interested in coming to see you. You know, so. It's good to tweet at least a few times a day. Try to stay consistent. Um, also, don't give up. Your Twitter account is not going to bump up. You know, you're not going to have a thousand. You're not going to have a thousand users in a day unless you're Charlie Sheen. And you don't want to be Charlie Sheen, more than likely. So uh, just just stay with it. You know, uh, just stay consistent. All right, exploration. All right. So now you're an expert in your field. You know your community and you're a consistent tweeter or Facebook user. Um, great. Some people stop there. You guys won't. I want you to explore constantly. If there is a new social media new network that pops up, I'm not going to walk. I will run to it and try to be on there. It's the very first person you know, on there. If it's in beta, it's not quite out yet. I will try to send a secret message to the, the founder and you know try to say. You know, what's coffee out Mississippi? Hook me up. You know, try to get me in there. You know, I'd love to use your service. Love to help you out. And I've also known to be uh, or to bribe with coffee. That that works. That definitely works. So just uh, just try to do, you know things start getting there. Social media is so new and it's changing every day. You know that. How many times have you got on Facebook? There's a new you know feed over on the right side or. You know, Google Plus has a new option. You know, just things are changing so fast. You don't want to wait and be the last person. Just so get out there, just try some stuff. You know, it's okay. 
you're going to make mistakes. I've made millions, and I will make more. But you know, just get out there and just try some stuff. You know? The adventure is just go do it. Um, and also, different people use different types of social media. You know, so try to find what works best for you and you know your followers, your, your community. Um, here's some examples that have worked great for us. Does anybody are, are you guys familiar with Instagram? Yeah, Instagram is amazing. Instagram is a picture sharing social network, basically, and it could take the most just common, boring picture and make it look pretty good. They have different filters. You, there's basically like a '70s filter or like a kind of a, kind of a starry filter, a dreamy filter, just something. It makes my junky you know, photos look amazing. And <laughs> so you can definitely work wonders. Uh, um, I always say Instagram picture is worth a thousand tweets because you can also like a picture or you can comment on a picture. You know, it's just it's real cool. You get feedback. Um, one very, very dirty thing that I like to do is early in the morning, I like to send out a picture of a scone, a blueberry scone, <laughs> or a muffin, or you know, just freshly baked. Or if it's hot, it's 110 degrees outside, just have this nice looking uh, strawberry mango smoothie, you know, just whipped cream, homemade whipped cream on top. It's, it's, I'm not proud of it, but I do. <laughs> Yeah, so, but just do stuff like that. I mean, like if a new book comes out, for instance, or if you have a great speaker, you know, that's going to be, you know, attending your library, put them on there. You know, just, just do something different. People, people want to be, you know, different. They want to try new things. So don't always use Facebook and, you know, and Twitter. But the good thing about Instagram is you can connect it to your Facebook or Twitter account. And um, all these accounts just build on each other, basically. So it's, 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 a, it's definitely a helpful tool. Um, I'm very much into music, um, so I got onto uh, another social network called Soundtracking. And uh, their tagline is share your live soundtrack. I, my music taste is fairly close to that of my main customer base, so you know, I, I tweet the music, you know, put that out there. And again, I'm making another connection. We talk about music, and if a customer tells me, hey, I love this song, or I love this album, you can guarantee that next time they come to the brew, it's going to be on the playlist. And they appreciate that. You know, just listen to them. Um, also explore by finding your target audience. I mean, definitely do that. People are, are people that are looking in their, you know, they're looking in their books, look, looking into reading. Not saying that the average 19-year-old frat boy is going to be into reading, because I was, you know. But they, uh, you know, search for people that are definitely into it. You know, just kind of build on that. A website called twittergrader.com is an amazing tool to find leaders in just about any field. I actually searched librarian and libraries, and there are thousands of people, you know, they're, they're experts on libraries. So use that, get out there, follow them, you know, explore that website and you know, see what they're doing. You know, that's a great, great way to, to go about it. Um, so basically you must explore, you never know when the next Facebook or Twitter is going to come along and you want to be at the front, forefront of it. It's okay to make mistakes, like I said. Yeah, it's going to happen. So just get out there and just do it. Um, suggestions now for you guys. Um, if I'm way off in any of these, I apologize. You know, just, just throw these out there. But um, you know, I was trying to find you know, ways you, know, you guys might be able to engage and uh, just do some cool things. I personally would use YouTube a lot. Does anybody make YouTube videos for your library? Yeah, great, that's perfect. Um, yeah, make the videos as exciting as possible, you know. Corniness, I think, is appreciated on the internet. So, you know, don't, don't be too silly, but uh, get your point across and just, you know, it's, it's a YouTube video, so have fun with it. Um, I mean, definitely libraries are some of the most beautiful places on earth. I mean, without a doubt, you know that. Look at this room here. Um, I, like I said, I'm a geek. I uh, very into libraries. Uh, last time we went to Harvard, I had to go see the library. Had nothing to do there. And, you know, I just, I just wanted to go see Harvard's library. Had to check it out. Um, one of my most fun memories of the library, again, when I was growing up, was this little old lady that used to read to us from when I was in kindergarten. And you know, growing up in grade school, I would not go to that library without going over to Hunger Neck. You know, that was that was huge for me. I love that. And um, 
I thought it would be really cool if maybe you guys could read like maybe the first chapter or like, you know, or just read some books to kids, you know, online. A lot of kids can't get to the library, but I almost guarantee that they have broadband internet at home, you know. But um, yeah, so just just put that out there. That would be very cool. Um, maybe, you know, like I said, read the first chapter of a, a huge book. I don't know if that's legal. You might want to check that out first. <laughs> but, uh, maybe try that. But uh, also, you know, if we have John Grisham here, I'm sure he's, you know, been on a bunch of YouTube videos. Use that. Um, definitely use Twitter and Facebook as a book club. I thought that'd be cool. I'm sure a bunch of you do that already. Um, and uh, from what I've seen, just from studying, you know, getting ready for the conference, <coughs> y'all are very connected, and that's great. That is awesome. You know, a lot of you are using, you know, hashtags and you know, talking to each other, and that's amazing. Um, I have to ask this, and excuse me for saying these words, but how are Nooks and Kindles, like e-readers, are they are they commonplace? Are you using that? Okay, right. Yeah, definitely. Technology's here to stay. Go with it. You know, you can't fight it. So um, utilize that, help that, bring new, new readers into the library with those. Um, use Twitter, again, to connect with the community. Definitely show people how easy it is to come in and check out a book. I've, I've talked to a lot of people, especially this week, again, just about the library here on campus. And a lot of people don't know where to park. You know, they don't know which door to go into. They, they, they're scared. They really are. And just, just let them know how open it is and how safe this place is and how amazing it is. Um, let's see. I thought this would be cool, and it might, again, it might be out there already. Are there any digital library cards, like on a smartphone? Have that? Okay. I just thought that would be really cool. We're going to start doing that in stream pretty, pretty soon. We can just swipe, walk up, swipe your, car, swipe your smartphone, and pay for your drink. You know, it's just cool. Um, let's see. I'm almost done here. Uh, definitely get your student workers involved in social media. They are way hipper than we are. <laughs> so just you know, use that. You know, just use them. They'll they'll love you for it. You know, they'll you know what Twitter is. You know, so just just use that, and they they'll help you out too. Uh, definitely, if you're going to do that, I would say make a set of rules. You know, for them for sure. We had to do this a strange group. You know, I love my baristas to tweet. You know. Bruno, fresh, you know, pot of coffee right now. We're cooking chocolate chip cookies, you know, they're fresh. They'll be out in just two minutes. Um, yeah, I love that, but there's, there's definitely a set of rules to it, absolutely. And I use this too, no cussing. You do have to say that. You know, just, just make sure that they respect the business and make sure, you know, they're being responsible. Um, have a, a QR code treasure hunt. I've done that a few times. I think it would be amazing here. And you could actually uh, enter treasure hunt, maybe with an amazing gift card from an awesome coffee house. <laughs> but uh, use it in a way where you can, you know, teach people how to really use the library, make them go to the different parts. You know, it'd be cool. And um, all right, finally, there is no silver bullet. There, there really are the masters or gurus of social media. Um, there's no way to succeed. There's no one way to succeed. Social media, like I said, is changing so quickly that everybody is an explorer. You know, things pop up every day, and nobody's going to be the master of it. So starting today, I want you guys to go out. I want you to explore. I want you to go make mistakes. Discover something new. If you have never seen a tweet, go send your first tweet. Who cares what it says? I've seen tons of horrible ones, you know? It's just, <laughs> I mean, some of the worst ones are just half sentences or half words, you know, it's, it's, it's whatever. I made a joke. I just actually sent my first tweet from a, a new Twitter account for a social group this morning, and it said, check, check, is this thing on or something? You know, <laughs> nobody cares. It's your first one. They expect something. What's going on with this thing? Um, so, you know, be the first to do something amazing, but above all, social media, just have fun. That's, that's the big thing. So thank you guys for allowing me to come talk to you today. And um, it's been a pleasure. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Email Shane at strangebrewcoffeehouse.com if you have any questions. If I mumble, if I uh, talk you know, too fast or anything. So 
I'd love to help you guys out with anything at all. So, thanks again. Do you have any questions? Yeah. Thomas. Oh, so, with so many accounts, do you use something that distributes the same message to all accounts, or do you, do you try to do different messages for each one? I always try to vary it up. I, I hardly ever send the same message. I, um, I will, for instance, I have a Cold Stone account also. So if Cold Stone, Cold Stone account's about half the size of my Strange Brew account. So if there's something really amazing coming out from Cold Stone, I'll send it out from Cold Stone and I'll retweet it from, from Strange Brew. And uh, there's, it's, it's crazy. Some people will only follow Strange Brew and others will only follow Cold Stone. You know? and, uh, yeah, but yeah, definitely, I always really, really try to vary it up you know, as much as possible. But I'm very transparent, very open about, yes, I own both places, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to spam people, I don't want to, you know, be annoying, and you know, if somebody does follow me on both, both accounts, I don't want them to unfollow me on one, really. But, um, yeah, so I definitely try to do that. Anything, I'm easy to talk to, anything at all. Do you find out? That ever, I, I follow you and uh, some of the people that also follow you, so I see conversations. Cool. Do you ever feel like some of the conversations go too far, or Sometimes. what do you do if that happens? Yeah. You know, in yeah. your business, obviously. Yeah, um, I talk about different accounts. So I have a strange, at Strange Brew is actually my private account, and that's not for employees, not for, you know, real customers, actually, you know, it's just for people that I really, really know from, like, high school, you know, stuff like that. But um, yeah, definitely people, there will be fans that kind of take it a little further than you should probably take it, like for a business account, you know, for sure. And um, you just have to be as nice as possible and just kind of try to shut it down, you know. Um, again, just especially, you know, with my Strange Brew account, you know, even though I might talk a little football trash or something, you know, it never goes overboard, and at least I don't think so. A few people might, um, but <laughs> I try not to. I always apologize to anybody ever says anything. But um, yeah, definitely be very clean, you know, for sure, and try to be as professional as possible. And um, it's, it's, if you do offend somebody, it's really easy to clean it up. You know, if you actually just go talk to them and let them know, you know, sort of stuff. And yeah, when it comes to people, there are people that, you know, try to, you know, take what I say and maybe go a little bit further. If it's like, you know, if I, if I am talking about opposing football team and, you know, they'll take it in a different direction, kind of like a, a, a malicious way or whatever, either just don't talk to them or just, you know, say, well, we should do that, you know. All right. Hope that answers the question. Maybe. It's an enthusiastic people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. They, it, and, you know, they might be coming from, you know, a private account. And, you know, they're talking to a public account. So what you have to do, you definitely have to, to reel them back in sometimes, you know, for sure. You know, let them know that, you know, this is this is a public place. So, yeah. Anything else? You were going to talk about the first uh, businesses to start with that really use Facebook, I think, and what I remember are the gas prices. Right, right. All several traffic sales. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Absolutely, I, and I try to definitely, I try to do that even like, not as much like lately with the past few years, but I'm trying to get back into that now because I know people are, yeah, yeah, definitely. People will get mad at me for that too, <laughs> you know, for sure. Um, sometimes I have backed off because people are like, why are you driving your gas prices so much? And, well, that's not me. And we are actually controlled pretty uh, pretty closely by the, who we get our gas from, who we buy our gas from. and. Uh, yeah, I have to explain that to people. I'm definitely not a millionaire. You know, I'm definitely not just raking in the dough for that. And um, yeah, that's that's something I wanted to put out there big time. It's, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's kind of bad. But yeah, would you like to see that more? Because I can definitely do it. For sure. Yeah, <laughs> I can definitely see that. It's right here. Got it. If it's anything like a big jump like that, I really try to, and I, I can hold off for it as long as possible. But we are contractually, you know, obligated yeah, to exactly. well, raise it. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's one of the things that really got people paying attention to what you're doing. Right. From a business standpoint, you know, seeing that you could really sort of advertise what people were doing. Right, like to the minute. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 
mean, it definitely that's that's what I want to build on, you know, for sure. And like I said, be as transparent as possible. You know, that's huge. You don't want to have, have any secrets again. People, you want them to trust you, you know, and why not be transparent if you're a good business or, you know, you know doing your right thing you know, in the library. So, you know, just let people know what's really going on. It's huge. Keep it again. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Shane. Thank you all.